What's up, people? So, the last thing that Marvel will do for Phase 4 came out yesterday, that being the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, which is just a mouthful of words. And, um, as somebody who actually doesn't hasn't been hating Phase 4 like a lot of people have, and has been enjoying it for the most part, with only... She-Hulk being the only thing I can think of that's actually bad. So going into this one, I was definitely a little more positive because, well, I mean, it's James Gunn. He's done some awesome work with the first two Guardians movies, and then The Suicide Squad, and even Peacemaker was amazing. So I didn't really have much, like, doubt going in. But, yeah, this... This special was actually really, really good, guys. I just, I want to make a quick video on it. I was thinking about saving it, my thoughts for the tier list that I'm going to do for all of Phase 4, at least from this year. But it was so good, I wanted to do a quick video on it. I don't know if this is going to be very long, but yeah. So, I mean, quick thought. I mean, like I just told, actually, I just told you, yeah, where... Those first two Guardians movies are both really, really good. And, and some of my favorite MCU movies is... And obviously they were cool in Infinity War and the and what little we got of them in Endgame and Love and Thunder, they were pretty good too. So now we have this one. And it's only 44 minutes long, so not much to go through. So the story... Is that, well, if you've seen the trailer, you do get the uh, the general idea of the premise where it's Christmas time and Mantis is feeling bad about what's been going on with Peter Quill. You know, after especially after losing Gamora in Infinity War, and then I guess seeing an alternate version of her in Endgame, but then she kicked him in the you know, and it was kind of like, huh. Yeah, his girlfriend is gone, even though there is a Gamora out there. But um, anyway, so Mantis is feeling bad about it. Though, she mentions that she's actually Peter's sister. And I've seen a lot of articles say that that was a big twist. I honestly hesitate to call it that, because when she mentioned that, th that, that Mantis and Quill were siblings, I was more thinking... That seems so obvious now that you say it out loud. How, how did I not put that together? Like, that seems like that was the plan since Volume 2. But, um, a story. I'm sorry. I'm getting, getting off track again. So, yeah, Mantis is feeling bad. Oh, and Craglin also talks about how Peter tried to sell, celebrate Christmas with Yondu, and Yondu was pretty ticked off about that. And so... Mantis wants to give him a really special Christmas present, and Drax suggests Kevin Bacon, which, of course, I do remember they have mentioned him a few times, especially with the movie Footloose, about how he was a cool, played a cool character in there, and Quill loved him as a kid, and, like, calls him a hero and all that, and so I thought that was a really clever idea for since Mantis and Drax don't understand that he was just an actor. So the two travel to Earth, and track uh, after hanging around, they eventually do find Kevin Bacon, played by the man himself, and uh, after some pretty fun un stuff, you know, even fighting some police, though thankfully they don't kill any of them, Mantis is able to control him, Kevin into going with them willingly after running away from them understandably so and eventually they find out he's a, he's an actor and mantis makes him pretend that he's an he's a real hero which i guess is sort of an actor but huh, now that i say that out loud but then okay so they go back to nowhere and they of course of course everybody is surprising peter with all the christmas lights and everything and then when Kevin is revealed to Peter. He's all he's rightfully calls out how messed up it is that they literally abducted a man. And and so he tells him to send him back. The Craglin does explain to 
Kevin what was going on about how how Peter looked up to him, him and Kevin decides to stay so he can t him show everybody what Christmas is really like 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 and so yeah all that it's kind of like sounds pretty fun uh, it's a fun story it, with well with the Guardian humor that you'd expect and the James Gunn humor um, oh and also one, one thing I just remembered too was they eventually all got presents and um, Rocket ended up getting Bucky's arm which is so funny even if I am questioning where did Nebula get that but um but I would but something else I've noticed about James Gunn his stories with Guardians or whether it be DC or Marvel is that he always has this really heartwarming thing under it where he makes the characters more three-dimensional where they feel like like real people struggling ugly he does that so well with with those first two Guardians movies with he's with he's just focusing on those two you know you have Peter's relationship with his mother or, and trying to get over her death and then his complicated relationship with his dad in the second movie and realizing Yondu was his real dad all along. So here we have, uh, have again Mantis wanting to make Peter feel better and uh, just like because she f he feels like it's her duty being his sister and Peter after Peter finally realizes, yeah, they are siblings, technically, he goes on to tell her that uh, that her being his his sister is like the best Christmas gift, something along those lines, and they embrace, and I'm just sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, I felt that. I really felt that. So yeah, thankfully, this is not just a fun short that they just made just for the heck of it, and because we all love Guardians, like, like, James Gunn and still threw some emotion in there that makes it feel like maybe this isn't a necessary part of the story, but it's like it doesn't feel pointless. Thankfully, he and with the, I think that's all I can think of for this. Is again, there's not really too much to say, eh, but I would believe it or not, I would go so far as to say that this is actually my favorite. Marvel thing to come out of this year. Spoiling my tier list right now. This is my favorite favorite thing for 2022 that Marvel has done. Wakanda Forever is definitely a number two, but this just really hit me <laughs> in a good way. And um, making me even more excited for Guardians 3 too, coming out in May, I believe, which after this, I'm, I'm even more excited for that. I can't wait. So, yeah, look out for my uh, tier list for uh, Phase 4 Part 2 as well. So, that'll be fun. Peace!